Welcome to How to Build a Tent, the podcast about how to make you successful. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show. Sharing the show with a friend helps us get the word out. It helps continue the amazing growth that we've had. I really appreciate that. If you want to give me a follow, if you want to watch the shows or listen to the shows, we live stream them on my social media sites, How to Build a Tent. I'm on YouTube, Minds, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Well, we're, you're going to be able to listen to the show for a while. I'm in the transition of moving, so it's just an audio podcast. But if you want to listen on YouTube, I know I do that sometimes. You can do that. Appreciate the follow, subscription, and sharing and tagging the show with a friend. We are part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Go over to fightlaughfeast.com. Put in how to build a tent or HTBT in the memo field. Probably HTBT is much simpler for you to do. And you'll get a free mug with all the benefits that the network is offering as well. So it's in addition to all the stuff you're paying for, you get a free mug from me. I send them out myself. And you are also coming alongside what the Lord is doing in this network, which is amazing, and I feel so blessed. We just added a whole bunch of new podcasts. There's a great business series about series about selling that's coming out, and there's a lot of other great content. So please subscribe, check that out. And you can also, I don't think I put in my told you my email address, Matt at howtobuildatent.com. A lot of you guys email me with feedback, questions, criticisms, encouragements. I love them and read them all. Every single email that you send, I read. So please give me a shout out. I appreciate it. Welcome all you first time listeners. And I want to talk a little bit about Memorial Day. It's one of the uh, most somber holidays we have. I don't normally put a show out for them, or I don't put a show out for any holiday because no one really listens. I hope that you're not listening to podcasts. I hope you're out spending time with your family, but I just want to say a special thank you and uh, and just want to know, want those of you who have lost a loved one in battle that have fallen in combat, uh, just want you to know that I'm praying for you. I'm so thankful for the sacrifice that your family has gone through and that they will not be forgotten and what it means to me, for families to serve in the military, give their lives, and it's just, I can't even put it into words. And usually I can't put things into words, but it just is such a amazing thing to think about the sacrifice that you families have gone through. And I love you guys. I'm so thankful for you guys. I pray for you guys all the time. If there's anything I can do to help, please reach out to me. I'd love to be able to help. I have a special place in my heart for military veterans and those that have uh, family members that have lost their lives. Um, So I'd love to hear from you guys. Love to hear your stories. And I just, it's an amazing thing. Like we have such an amazing country. Yeah, there are a lot of things wrong with it. And yeah, we need to repent and come to Jesus as a nation and there's a lot of atrocities that happen but you guys have made it possible through your sacrifice for us to be able to proclaim the gospel over podcasts to be able to share things on social media to be able to get into the fight and be able to help so many people around the world to be able to send missionaries to send money to be able to have a beacon of freedom an example for other nations to strive towards And it's all possible because of what you guys have done. And I just wanted to say thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And I'm praying for you guys always. And thank you for all those who served as well. I know Memorial Day is not Veterans Day. But any time that I get an opportunity to say thank you to all those who served, I appreciate it. And seriously, you guys are all in my prayers. I'm not just saying that. I pray for you guys daily. Because I know how hard it is. My wife is uh, in a came from a military family. And so I get to experience that. I'm married into a great family and get to hear a lot of the stories about what goes on in the military life. The next thing I want to talk about, we just got our goods shipped out. So I will not see a lot of my stuff for 45 days. And we're living out of suitcases. And that is why there's no video for this podcast. 
I'm sitting right next to four open suitcases with all of our stuff because our furniture is uh, mostly gone that's going to be shipped. And yeah, so we're living the nomad life. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about the movers. I, they were really great guys. And it kind of just broke my heart in a lot of ways. They came, it took three days, two days to move. And then they had the third day was for like surveying the, the, all the stuff that needed to be moved. And we bought them lunch two days. I made them lunch myself on the last day and got to eat with them and talk with them. One guy wanted to be an evangelist, which is really cool to see. And he got to pray and it was just, I just love running into people through business that are Christians. It's just that there's a special connection there, but it was really sad in a lot of ways too. I was, they were sharing with me. Now, when I think of movers, I'm thinking of college kids, thinking about people that don't have a lot of work experience that are making money for college or for funding their startup on the side. But these guys were in their late fifties. One of them was a grandfather. And I was letting them play with my son, and my son was like loved watching them move things, pack things in boxes, and bring things down the stairs. And they were talking with him, and I was like kind of just joking, like you're gonna have to do hard work like this someday. I mean, I wasn't joking that he's gonna have to do hard work someday, but I was kind of just being, you know, juvial and just, you know, just kind of having small talk with them as they were walking by. And they were saying, don't do what I have to do. Like, don't ever end up doing what I have to do. And man, it all, if I was a crying man, that probably would have made me cry. Not that there's anything wrong with crying. I do cry from time to time. I'm just going to be a little honest between you and me. But, and that made me think about you guys too. And I hope that you are out there and you are having careers, you're having jobs where you don't have to say to somebody or you can't say to somebody, don't do my job. I don't know like how bad you have it at your job. I don't know how much you hate coming to work every day. But if you are in a job that you absolutely hate, I'm just gonna say there's probably something better for you out there. And this life is too short. God has too big of a plan for you to spend your whole life doing something miserable. And I don't know what led them to be in their late 50s doing moving, but I can imagine, right? You grew up poor. A lot of them were immigrants from the Philippines. So they probably don't have an education and they felt like probably they didn't know their options. They didn't, they don't have the entrepreneurial spirit like most Americans do. Not that say that only Americans have that, but that's kind of like a, a cultural distinctive in America. And they didn't know anything better. And so they started doing this. They found work. They're providing for their family. And again, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that like they're bad people or they're stupid or they've done something wrong. But like even at their lives, there there could be something more. And if they would just see the opportunity. And I wanted to talk to him about it, but I didn't know how to say it without sounding like condescending or something. I mean, I'm 30 years younger than them, 25 years younger than them. But for you, for us in this conversation, education is so important. And when I mean education, I don't necessarily mean college like we've talked about before. But don't find yourself wasting away at something, even if it's not hard labor, maybe it's an office job and you just don't find fulfillment in it. You don't find joy in it. Don't waste your life doing that. I firmly believe that when we obey God and we are being responsible and we're taking responsibility for ourselves and we are constantly seeking after what God has for us, we're not going to end up in a spot like that. We're not going to end up in a place for the long term. There's going to be times where we're in a job that we don't like. There's going to be times where we're in projects that we hate. I've been in them tons of times. But it's not the end. It should not be the end because we are most glorifying God when we are satisfied in him and satisfied with where we are at. And that's what John Piper talks about. We're most glorified. God's most glorified when we're most satisfied in him. And work is such a big part of our lives. And I just want you guys to be encouraged. I want you, if you feel like you have been just kind of coasting, been just riding the current and you find yourself in a place where you are just not happy with your job. Well, make a plan. Start finding out what it is that you love to do. What is your passion? 
and then start researching. What does it take to get into a job that will satisfy that passion? Because those are the God, passions that God has given you. God has given you passion. God has given you the emotion of enjoyment. And it is not something to be far off that can't be obtained. And I really believe that that is part of the way that God guides you into what he has for you, is to find the what you are passionate about, to find what you love, and to do it. And it may not be a high-paying job, and that's okay. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be um, somebody who retires at 30. But you can find a job where God uses you the most, and you can be successful at a job that you enjoy. You don't have to tough it out. And that's something I want to encourage you guys with. Please, like, just if you need help figuring that stuff out, reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to help you guys along. Maybe I have a connection I can help you with or something that I can recommend to you. Maybe it's a course. Maybe it's a... Um, you know, a school, maybe it's a program. I don't know what it is, but there are going to be steps that you can take to get out of the situation you're at if you are um, in a spot that you don't like. Don't think that you deserve to be miserable your whole life. That's another thing. I don't know if you have that mindset. I have known people to have that mindset before where they feel like they deserve to be miserable their whole lives, and that's sinful. That is something you should repent of because we should be full of the joy of the Lord. And yeah, that joy is not based on circumstances. That's not based on our jobs. But also, on the other side, you shouldn't be punishing yourself and feeling like this is what you deserve. So I, those are kind of uh, not really uplifting and positive things to start our week from a Memorial Day weekend. But I, those are very important things that we need to remember the sacrifices that people have for us. And we also need to... Um, Make sure that we are not just staying complacent and if we are in a place where we are not full of joy, that we look and pray for God to uh, show us what he has for us and where he wants us to go if some, somewhere else. And then start taking making an action plan, looking for those jobs that are going to be where we have passions, are going to be where we feel like God's called us. And then we're going to find and set goals that are going to get us there. Maybe it's connecting with people, going to events in that industry. Maybe it's getting an education. Maybe it's watching YouTube videos. Maybe it's learning programming at a, at a coding camp, like we've talked to with guests before on the show. But don't waste your life. Don't waste your life checking the box, being miserable, not sharing your faith when you're at work, not using your time and your energy and your resources to do something for the kingdom of God and just covering your expenses and getting by in life. There's so much more. We need you to get into the battle. And just as we've talked about how we need Christians to be successful business people, to make money, to use their money to invest in, into people, into business ideas, we also need people that are we need christians to all be in the fight and to be redeeming the times even if that means that you are not going to be a millionaire and that means that you're not going to be investing in companies but maybe you're just going to be a faithful christian at your job that you need to be redeeming that time as well you don't get to escape you don't get to be passive we need every christian in this fight it's too important there's too much at stake speaking of steak I went to a really great restaurant. I'm in that phase where in the last couple of weeks of being in Hawaii, so all my friends and you know people, connections that I've met in Hawaii want to be taking me out to dinner. We went to a great, a great restaurant. It was, uh, it was at a hotel in downtown, and it's one of those restaurants that are at the top, and it was funny. I haven't been to one in a while. You take the elevator up, and your ears start to pop, which is a weird feeling to think about when you're you're in a, such a high building that your ears start to come to uh start to pressurize like you're climbing up a big mountain anyways i had i decided to branch out from my mccallan 18 that i normally get and i went to got some belvini 21 and i just want to give a shout out to the family and the folks in the business of belvini you guys make some delicious scotches Oh my goodness, that was one of the best scotches I had. I was so good. I was passing it around to my wife. I was passing it around to somebody who doesn't even drink. 
and she said it was fantastic. Now, if you can make a scotch that somebody who doesn't drink enjoys, you know you're doing something right. It was just a, an amazingly complex, had a great finish, and it just everything about it was great. I'm not even gonna say a great finish. It was every single part of it, from the smelling to the finish of the uh, drink, from every sip was phenomenal and oh my goodness i am a new believer in that scotch belvini 21 it was fantastic and another dessert i had which i've never had before i don't know why I'm, this is going to be the food podcast apparently uh i never had this before it was an italian dessert which was like it comes with a cappuccino or not cappuccino espresso and then you dip it on ice cream and you eat it and if you are a coffee lover and you love ice cream you got to try that someday get a, even if you go to starbucks and just get a shot of espresso take it take it with you let it cool down for a little bit so it doesn't melt the ice cream right away and then just pour it all over a scoop of vanilla ice cream it is absolutely amazing uh, so that's a little shorter podcast today uh, i had a really busy weekend moving and stuff but just if you see a veteran, if you see, if you know a family member that has experienced a loss from combat, from somebody losing their life, why don't you reach out to them? Just say you're praying for them. See if there's anything you can do. Help support them, especially if they're Christians, brothers and sisters in the Lord. This could be a hard time for them as well. This could be a hard week as they remember their loved ones that are lost. And also, also if you are in a job that is just making you miserable. I'm going to be praying for God to show you a way out, to show you another job, another career that you are going to be full of joy. This life is too short. Make the most of it. Live for the kingdom and proclaim the gospel in everything you do. Now let's go out and be successful together.